Welcome back to our studio in Irving, Texas. Chris Buttonrini and Golia. I, I had a bunch of their games last year. I would always ask Coach Montgomery about the come from behind wins. He didn't really have an answer as to, you know, why it always played out like that. But it, uh, it made for some thrilling TV and some great football games to watch. Obviously, there'll be a question at quarterback, but a lot of talent coming yeah. back for this Tulsa team. What do you see out of them? I'm an old school person, and I believe you build your teams from the inside out, and this team is built from the inside out. Uh, Jackson player, defensive tackle, one of the best defensive linemen in the country, and that offensive line returns all its starters, 120 career starts, so I love that from, uh, from Tulsa, so watch out for them once again this season. Yeah, they have a lot of uh, wide receivers returning. Shamari Brooks will be returning after a knee injury. Had him sit out 2020. Let's join Coach Montgomery now. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, I and mean, we joke about the come from behind wins, but I I'm sure you'd rather uh, flip the switch and have uh, these guys get out to hot starts early. What have you seen from your team throughout spring and as you start to enter fall camp? Well, you like y'all commented on. I mean, we have quite a few of our starters that are coming back. And so as we went through spring ball, just the ability to to continue pushing uh, from a standpoint of what you're going to do from an installation standpoint, the carryover that you got from last season. And then, you know, we've had such good leadership. I mean, you talked about our guys up front. We've got a lot of guys coming back up front. We have to be good there. Um, we've been good there for the last couple of years. We've got to continue to be strong there. And then you know, most of our skill guys are coming back as well. So uh, we feel good about where we're at. Obviously, we've got a tough schedule in front of us. Conference is always uh, very difficult, but uh, we're, we're going to be up for the challenge. OK, we'll take questions for Coach Montgomery, please. We'll get started with Caden McFarland from KJR, KJRH TV in Tulsa. Hey, Coach, we've talked for years about the way you guys, especially on defense, have tried to re recruit length, and then you all the experience you were just talking about, juniors and seniors are always, you know, put together better than freshmen or sophomores would be. Just walking out on the field for practice number one today, I wonder if that was just the best you have ever had one of your teams look since you've been here at TU. Well, I think our guys have done a tremendous job throughout the spring and the summer, just getting their bodies prepared and ready for this upcoming season. I was obviously really thrilled with the way they reacted today. Uh, you saw guys, you know, in their change of directions and things like that, just being able to stick and move uh, the length that we're carrying in our secondary and the things that happen with that length. Uh, in addition to that, just being able to handle that practice with the type of energy that they had from start to finish. That's always something that we're going to build on each and every day. We'll go next to TJ Eckert from KTUL in Tulsa, please. Yeah, coach, I'm not sure how much preseason rankings come up with you guys, I imagine hardly ever, but sixth today by the media. Uh, do you use that as motivation? Do you throw that in the garbage can and move on? What do you guys do with stuff like that? Yeah, you know, I, I think we, again, have a have a veteran-type team. And uh, preseason rankings and polls don't mean a whole lot to them. For us, we're going to really concentrate on us for the first couple of weeks and then really lock into our first opponent. That's what we're concerned about. And then getting better every day. Uh, these guys have done a great job of that over their careers here, and we're going to continue that same mindset. We'll go next to Dan Tortora. Wake up call DT, please. Good afternoon, Coach. Hey, Dan. How are you? I'm doing well. I hope you are as well. Uh, to take a look at uh, realignment, where Tulsa is in proximity to the Big 12 teams that will be left after Oklahoma and Texas move on, how are you seeing realignment and what can you say about what it could mean for the American potentially? Well, I think number one, you know, all the realignment talk, that's that's probably out of my pay grade. There's there's guys in, in rooms that are making decisions and making moves on all of that part of it. But, you know, for us, I, I know our conference is extremely strong. We're a conference that has gained respect uh, on the national level, I think, over the last couple of years, and we're still – uh, growing and we're still building. So uh, our conference is strong. We've got strong teams in it. We've got strong players and strong coaches. And so uh, we feel like we're in a good position now. You know, we're going to focus in on what we got to do this season, continue to try to win games. And then as far as the uh, college football playoff expansion, it looks like it's going to be going to 12. Just what that means for the American Athletic Conference. And if you feel like respect will finally be at the doorstep with 12 opportunities moving forward. 
Yeah, I, I think everybody in our conference is, is really excited about the 12-team the expansion, um, giving us an opportunity to, to have a gateway into that playoff system. Uh, we've had some really talented teams over the years and, and feel like we're this is not – uh, a year that we won't. We're going to have several other teams within our conference this year being uh, available and, and ready to, to have that opportunity. So uh, the 12 game, the 12 team expansion, I think that's a benefit not only for us, but for college football in general. Thank you, Coach. We'll go next to Trace Trilco from Sons of UCF, please. Uh, Coach, as camp gets underway, what's your team's vaccination rate and what are your thoughts on the league's position that games impacted by COVID will not be rescheduled and could uh, teams could face possible forfeit? Yeah, you know, I'm not going to get into the stats of how many guys we have vaccinated and don't. Um, you know, that's that's kind of falls underneath the HIPAA and, um, you know, I'm really not going to get into that part of it. Our team has done a good job of taking care of business. Last year, we took care of business from the standpoint of, you know, reducing our bubble, uh, staying within the confines of ourselves and, and trying to make sure that we were prepared and ready to play each and every week. And so uh, we're going to do that same thing this year as, as we approach this season, this fall camp, and getting ready to play. We'll go back to Caden McFarland for the next one, please. Coach, with regard to offense, it's probably been about five years now since you guys put together the kind of season that I know you, you take pride in. Um, had, I know you've changed some of what you do offensively, but probably the philosophy remains about the same. But with everything you've got coming back, should this look a lot like it did in 2016, or has the game changed enough? And you know that maybe that's not necessarily the goal. I'm just wondering, with this group, do you feel like you're going to get back to playing the kind of offense you've always, you know, I think taken pride in? Yeah, you know, I think there's a lot of factors that go into it, and I think we have to continue to change and evolve uh, each and every year. You know, as I look at us offensively, with the talent that I think we have up front, with the talent that we've got coming back at the receiver's position, uh, most of our running backs are back. Uh, we feel like we've got um, the opportunity to be really explosive, uh, but also to be able to just sit back there hand the football off, let our offensive line work, let our backs work. But if we get opportunities to push the ball down the field, we're going to do that. So uh, I think we can be balanced just like we've always wanted to be. Uh, we're going to continue to evolve and change. But I think there's a lot more explosive plays out there for us to go get. And for us, it's going to start with, you know, how our quarterback plays and him distributing the football and us taking care of him. We'll go back to TJ Eckert from KTUL, please. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned, I think, this morning after practice that this will be the fastest you've installed things in a while. How important is that for an offense? And then, obviously, going back to last year with how crazy fall camp was in terms of practicing and stopping and starting all over again. Yeah, I mean, we're excited to be back to, to more normal days and, and have a more normal schedule feel to it. Um, yeah, we, we are installing quicker, TJ, than, than what we have, uh, both offensively, defensively, and special teams. Some of that deals with, I think, some of the changes that we've had to our preseason module and, and how we're doing that. Uh, we're just trying to make sure with the experience that we do have coming back, we want to be able to add, we want to get all of it in front of them, and then have that opportunity to kind of dissect that before we get through with fall camp. So uh, we're going to install a little bit quicker, but our guys are ready for it. They're ready to handle it, and uh, they handled it well this morning. We'll go back to Dan Tortora for the next one, please. Coach, uh, advancing to the AAC championship last season, building off of that success and just where you feel Tulsa is at, because you and I have spoken about how close you were in games over the years, but last year you started to really close that gap. Yeah, you know, I think we're close. Again, uh, we've got great leadership on this football team. I thought last year those guys did a really good job of coming together. Um, and then we started making some plays late in games. Um, I thought our team really took a big step forward in understanding we're never out of a game. Those plays are going to be made. Uh, we've got to do a better job this year of coming out of the gates a little cleaner, uh, starting a little faster from that standpoint. And then we still got to finish the way we did. 
the one thing you can count on in our league is you're going to get exciting games. They're going to be 60-minute games that you've got to play every second of it. Our team has done that throughout my, my tenure here. We're going to continue to do that, but obviously – uh, coming out of the gates a little bit quicker is is, be, is a big emphasis for us this year. We'll take the next one from Trace Trilco, please. A coach, in terms of Oklahoma and Texas to the SEC, what do you think it means for the health of the sport of college football? You know, I, I just think there's so many different avenues that this thing could go in. And uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, if they decide to move to the, the SEC and, and that all happens and transpires and how quickly does it happen, you know, is it going to be good for college football? We'll wait and see. You know, for us, I'm concerned about Tulsa. Um, I'm concerned about our American Conference and uh, concerned about us winning this year. Coach, for the decision of who will get the keys to the offense um, at under center, how will you evaluate and decide uh, who that decision goes to? Yeah, I mean, I think we're we're there. I mean, Davis Brin right now is our starting quarterback. He's a guy that has taken the majority of the reps in the spring. He's also done that throughout the summer and in their workouts uh, as well as you know today. So uh, he's a guy that has really stepped up. I uh, really love the way he handles us offensively. He's a guy that understands what we really want to do, makes great decisions, gets the ball out of his hands. Um, and so we're excited about his leadership and what he's going to bring to the table. Coach Rini and Goli here. We got to listen to Chris Paul, one of your leaders, one of your great offensive linemen yesterday. He spoke. And just tell us about him because he seems like an incredible young man. Yeah, Chris Paul is incredible. I mean, uh, I, we've been telling him around. We call him the president because when he turns 35, we're all voting for him. We're going to make him run because that's just who he is. Chris has never met a stranger. Um, he's welcoming to everyone. Uh, he wants to help you in no matter what you're doing. He's a great ambassador for not only our university, but the conference in general. And, um, you know, he's very well respected, not just here, but across the nation. He was. He was certainly a joy to listen to yesterday. Hey, Coach, we appreciate you spending some time with us. Good luck at fall camp, and can't wait to see you guys out in the field here in a couple of weeks. Hey, appreciate it. Can't wait to see you all again, too. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Same here. Being in person at yeah. football games and seeing coaches, uh, something that we're looking forward to in 2020. That was head coach Philip Montgomery. Uh, as we look ahead at the, the Tulsa team, they've decided to make a decision. This Davis Burn kid is a kid yeah. that I like a lot because I saw him in the Tulane game. Always sat there at third string under Seth Boomer. Got a chance to come into that game. Threw for over 200 yards. They won that game in second overtime. Zach Smith then was out. He still didn't get the start. It was Seth Boomer then the next three games. A guy like that in nowadays, Transfers. you can transfer. Yep. Exactly. It, what does it say about the leadership, the commitment to a team that he sat there and like, you know what, I could win this battle next year? It, it says a lot, right? Because you, you just said it. People just don't want to work hard. They don't want to keep fighting. They want to yeah. just transfer. It's the coach's fault. I should be starting. He sat there. He kept fighting. And now he's going to get the starting job. And I, I think that goes a long way uh, in a leadership role. Congratulations to him because he's got all the weapons on <laughs> offense he needs in the running backs and the wide receivers. Defensively, they lose Zayvon Collins, yeah. who just was an incredible talent, a great kid. Defensively, where do they – how do you fill those shoes? I think – the well, you don't, yeah. and he's that good. But I think collectively they got enough pieces back. We're going to see Jackson player in a second. Well, I really think one of the best defensive linemen in the country. And, you know, they've had a great offensive line, good up front. So I, I think they'll be fine. But Coach Montgomery talked about it. I think their issue is going to be – getting off to quicker starts in the yeah. game because you just can't rely on coming back from behind, especially in this conference. With the talent they have coming back, were you shocked at where they were picked in the preseason poll? Kind of, but that just goes to show you how good this conference is. Yeah. I mean, this conference really is kind of stacked. And so uh, it, it's going to be a battle this year for sure. Well, we now have the uh, student athletes joining us now, Jackson Player and Keelan Stokes joining us. Hey, guys, thank you so much for spending some time. We'll let the media start tossing some questions your way. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, gentlemen. We'll get started with Jonathan Husky from KOTV in Tulsa, please. 
Uh, hey guys, um, kind of just your general thoughts on um, where you guys sit, kind of what they were just speaking of. You guys have so much talent coming back. There's a lot of expectations here in Tulsa. Um, your thoughts on, on kind of where you were picked in the preseason poll? Um, well, I feel like for the preseason polls, we really don't, you know, care about things like that. It's not something that we just worry about or something that we just base our game off of. That's not nothing that we just look forward to seeing. It doesn't really matter. We just go out there and take it day by day and play the game as we do. Um, speaking on the offense, like, you know, we are working on things as far as, like, you know, starting faster, getting things right on offense and, you know, clicking with Davis Brent because he's the guy right now. So it's like that's what we working on and worry about, to be honest. We'll go next to TJ Eckert from KTUL, please. Uh, yeah, Jackson, this one's for you. What You know, you lose a guy like Zavin Collins, who is obviously one of the best players in the country and a leader in the locker room, and then you lose a couple corners as well on the, on the defense. Where do you see that, A, the leadership coming from, and B, maybe who's going to step in and fill some of those voids? Uh, it's tough losing anybody, especially a player like Zavin and our two corners, but we got great leadership on the defense. And we got some great guys stepping up and coming back off an of injury, so uh, this year should be special. We'll go next to Caden McFarland, please. KJRH TV. Hey Jackson, uh, for you this year, you know your name's popping up on some of those watch lists, so people are aware of you and as potentially an NFL guy. And so, you know, I would think a little bit of expectation, increased expectation comes with that. What what kind of expectations do you have for yourself or what kind of goals do you have? Is it just to run it back and have much the same kind of production that you had last year? Do you expect to take your game to a different level in, in some way? Uh, I always expect to elevate my game and every year I play and just get better. But I'm more focused on the team winning and us winning games and however I can contribute in that part. That's where I'm, my, all my focus is at right now. We'll go to the next one for Dan Tortora, uh, wakeupcalldt.com, please. This is for both of you. Just what you can say about uh, last season, as I spoke with Coach about closing the gap. You're a team that's played teams close, but at the end of the game, struggled a little bit. Last year was a different story. Just building off of last year and, and what was clicking last year. Um, to go based off last year, uh, it was really ups and downs, uh, really a roller coaster, to be honest, with everything that was going on with COVID and stuff like that. We'll play a game and then have to sit two weeks off. But I mean, that's no excuses to how we came out there and played the game. We did start off slow and did wait to the last second to, you know, pick things up. But I mean, that's the whole focus on a new year right now. So, you know, we just here based on this new year, we're trying to get things right in that nature, you know, come out there and dominate this league. Yeah, and just to piggyback off of that, I just think this uh, last year it was just crazy for everybody. This year we're a, we're a much closer team, I think, and I think we got a lot in store for us this season. And then for you both as well, thoughts on NIL, name, image, and likeness. What do you know about it as far as the, the information that's been provided, and what do you think about the opportunity? Uh, I think it's a great opportunity for us, but as a collective team, we're not really focused on that. We're more focused on just getting getting through fall camp and getting ready and prepare for the season. Yeah, and uh, to piggyback off of that, that's I mean that's basically all we worried about is this season. Um, it is a great opportunity. It's good things happening to a lot of great athletes out there, but I mean that's not our main goal right now. And our, our main focus is to go out there and win the conference and you know do other things, bigger things. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. We'll go back to T.J. Eckert, KTUL, for the next one, please. Yeah, Keelan, from the offensive side of things, Coach Montgomery said this morning you guys are going to install faster than you guys have in a while, which is a good thing. Uh, how different or how much better is it to have a normal somewhat fall camp compared to last year where you guys were, you know, starting and stopping and, and having to try to cram things in there up before the season started? Um, it's, it's actually excellent. It's great, to be honest, you know, just for us coming back, a whole veteran team. You know, it's a lot of things moving, clicking. So it's just, it's great to see everyone out there moving and flowing at the speed that we were going at today. It was really amazing. Um, to be honest, with Davis being back there and things clicking the way they're clicking, uh, it's going to be tough. Yeah, it's going to be tough this year. We're going to be a tough team to, to, to deal with, to handle, you know, however you want to put it. So. 
And we'll take the next one from Caden McFarland, please. Hey, Keelan, I heard your voice quite a bit today at practice and heard the voice of a lot of those veteran guys. Uh, was this, you know, practice, number? it's just one practice, but was is it noticeably different than, than say, starting the season in, in your previous seasons, just the number of veterans that are out there? Is there more of kind of a professionalism about this group? Because so many of the guys that are out there know exactly where to be, know exactly what to do, um, you know, and with the success you had last year, does, does it just feel different, you know, be, having this many guys who have been through it? Uh, yeah, it does feel different because, you know, everyone could say something, you know, it's not just one person talking. It's not just two people talking. It's the whole team, you know, everybody done been through something. Everybody knows what to do, knows what position you need to be in, knows where you need to be on this place. So, I mean, just to have everyone out there being leaders and the leadership that we have on this team, it just feels amazing. We'll go to one more from Jonathan Husky, please. Uh, yeah, Keelan, for you, um, you've mentioned Davis a couple times now. Uh, you know, everybody kind of got introduced to him in the two-lane game last year. Uh, he's come in kind of from the jump since the end of the year as, as, as the guy under center. Just what have you seen out of him? What's impressed you the most out of him? And, and how's he been able to kind of come in as the number one guy from kind of day one of the offseason and handle that role? Um, like we were just talking about leadership and, you know, that's where Davis stepped in, you know, he's took a huge role and stepped up to be a great leader for this team. You know, a lot of guys listen to him on this team and it's just, a, it's just great to have him, you know, behind the center and he knows so much that he does and, you know, like he can just pass that along to the next guy and the next guy. So it's just great to have someone back there like that. Hey, guys, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Looking forward to watch you guys open up the season here in a couple weeks. Enjoy fall camp. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.